me. Some of y'all do. I'm a skirmish FC for a Brave. I've been in for about 60 days, 70 days, kind of new to Brave. But I'm not new to jump freighters, and that's what I want to talk to you guys today about. Um, does anybody here fly a jump freighter? I do. I do. Mexican. Uh oh, and Dujak, right? Oh, yeah, Dujak. We've done our own little class, huh? Oh, no, it yeah. wasn't. You was first to Luna, I think. Anyway, so the pur the purpose of this series I'm going to do is called A NoSec Life, and it's uh, basically teaching guys uh, some of the parts of NoSec Life that don't get touched on uh, enough, or people only learn from, like, uh, uh, a who's who's. Like, I know this guy, and this guy knew this guy, and he told me type of deal. And um, the main thing I want to cover is about personal logistics. So today we'll be on the jump freighter, and then the next class will probably be on the Blops battleship paired with the blockade runner. So uh, for the guys who don't know, a jump freighter is a capital ship. It's a capital class ship. It has a jump drive. You have to load it with fuel based off the racial type jump freighter that you have. And it can jump you anywhere from uh, five to past eight light years, depending on your skills. There is not much difference, contrary to popular belief or debate, there's not really much difference between the jump freighters uh, besides the aesthetic look. Uh, but there is a few variations. For instance, the Rhea has the largest cargo hold after mods. So once you put all your expanded cargo hold mods, that would be the largest amount of cargo you can haul. And uh, I will say that the Anchor, which is what I fly, um, has a really good training path because the lower freighters and the haulers um, have a lot of specializations if you want to get into PI or or, or hauling and, and different types of things like that. So I would suggest Raya or the Anchor, but it's personal preference. And it's not going to make that big of a deal. The benefit uh, about a jump freighter is the fact that you get your stuff where you need it when you need it. And that is critical for NOLSEC life. Uh, you might be leaving a um, a corporation to put a bad taste in your mouth. Uh, you might be moving on a move up like we did recently, or you might be staging for some big event like the winter event or something like that. The jump freighter allows you to do all those things quickly and independently. Um, another reason why it's good is because you can help your friends. You can help people in the alliance. You can help people in your corporation. Uh, just over this past move up, a lot of us have been helping uh, some of the new bros move millions and millions and millions of uh, cubic meters worth of material into new staging and into new areas. Uh, and the last thing is you can also help the Alliance as they go to move their hangar stock and move their uh, stockpiles of fuel blocks and things like that. You're one more body that can help the Alliance with its objective with your jump freighter. And you can get paid doing all that stuff as well. So it's, it can also provide you ISK. With all of that said, there's a couple very key things you have to do to stay alive, stay safe, and use a jump freighter. Uh, the first thing I want to direct you guys to, which is going to become your friend if you're a jump freighter pilot, is Dotland. And I'm assuming everyone here has heard of Dotland. If you haven't, go ahead and say something now. Okay. I'm going to bring up Dotland on my screen and want to go through a couple things. At the top of your screen, um, when you begin to plot your course, your jump course, right? You're going to have to go on Dotland and use the navigation section, which is at the top where my cursor is right now. You click that. This loads up the jump planner. This is how you navigate EVE with any ship that has a jump drive. Capital class ships, super carriers, jump freighters. If it has a jump drive, this Dotland is your friend. Um, the first thing you would do is say, type in your uh, destination or where you're leaving from, right? So say you're leaving from GETA. Put that in there and say you want to go to FTAC in. Now in, in uh, Dotland, you have to wait for that pop-up to show up and actually click the sector that you're going to. If you don't do that, you're not going to get, it's not going to work. It's not going to let you hit the, uh, the add button. After you do this, you select your ship type. I fly the Anchor, so I select the Anchor, but it'll have the carriers, the dreads, the blops, as well as the jump freighters. Then you input all of your skills. Jump drive calibration, jump fuel conservation, and jump freighter. 
all these, if you're going to be a serious jump freighter pilot, like it's something you're going to do a lot, you, they should be at five. But everyone who gets in a jump freighter should at least get their jump drive calibration to level five. Now, the reason why that is is because jump drive, jump drive calibration, each level increases the max jump range of your freighter in light years. So someone who has jump drive calibration level one, as opposed to someone who has jump drive calibration level five, it's a drastic distance in how many uh, intermediate jumps between their starting system and destination. It could be even be like, say, minus two jumps in between. A guy with jump drive calibration one, it could be six or seven jumps in between. So it's a huge deal and it saves you massive amounts of fuel and it keeps you safe. Now, once you do that, there are some other things you can do here. And I suggest always when using a jump freighter, unless you're on some sketchy stuff or some alliance stuff and you got cover and you know what you're doing, is click prefer station system. That's critical because you're going to want to jump your um, jump freighter onto stations so that you can dock up immediately and do everything you can to reduce the chance of getting ganked. And preferring station systems ensures that the, the route only gives you jump points that have stations in system. The last thing you can do on dot land is avoid a system. So if there's a super sketchy, dangerous system that you know about and Dotland keeps spitting that out as an option and you do not want to go there, you type that um, system into this bar right here, click avoid, and it will not factor into your navigation route. Now, I'm going to click go to show you the route. So this is a route you could use from JITA to FTACN. It's not the only route, you can change it, you can figure out your own routes, but this will tell you how much fuel is needed on each jump. It'll tell you, this is critical information here, the amount of kills in the system recently and the amount of jumps. These two values right here are gonna be a part of what you use to decide whether or not you wanna use a system. And it's not only the first time you look at it. But as you navigate, you're gonna to wanna to notice the spikes and the kills and the jumps and begin to form an understanding of whether or not the system truly is a good one or is it one you need to change. Uh, one of these systems could say like this one, zero and 358 now, but in six hours, it could say a thousand kills and double the amount of jumps. So you learn your systems as you use them. Uh, that's pretty much the whole deal of Dotland in terms of, in terms of jump freighters. And uh, it'll be something you use every single time you uh, hop into your jump, jump freighter before you undock. Um, now, fuel consumption is a big deal, too. Each, like I said, each freighter uses its own type of fuel. So the Galente jump freighters will use oxygen isotopes. And for example, the Mimitar will use hydrogen isotopes. Whatever jump freighter you choose to buy, you always want to have to make sure that you're only buying the fuel that works for that jump freighter. Um, and just always double check that before you undock because it's terrible when you jump out of the middle of nowhere and you can't make your jump. Now, uh, that's the main thing about navigating. Um, I will, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys ask some questions about that because then I'm going to move into some practical things that will save your life. Does anyone have a question about Dotland and how to use it or anything that we've talked about so far? Nope, nobody? Okay, cool, cool. Now, let's talk about how to be safe. I'm going to get me a shuttle because I don't have one. All right. Now, before I show you this, the practical application of how to be safe, I want to tell you a couple things about your first route. Now, say we were going to take this route and go up to Jita. One of the first things you want to do is lay the groundwork. You want to lay down your infrastructure. And this is for any permanent route you ever do. You want to lay down infrastructure on your first run. What does this mean? This means that Vilesen and Ananen, on my first run, when I start out from FTAC in, say I bought the uh, freighter down in FTAC in from the awesome Indie Bros, and man, I'm excited. I'm ready to take my first jump. Before I undock, because there's two intermediate jumps, I will buy five, five ventures, 10,000 isotopes, 
uh, I mean, excuse me, 10,000 liquid ozone and 50,000 oxygen isotopes, which is my jump freighter's fuel type. And I'll do the same thing for anonym. So that's a total of 10 ventures, 20,000 liquid ozone and 100,000 oxygen isotopes. You will also buy five fits for each system. So a total of 10 fits for those 10 ventures. Uh, on your first run, you're going to drop all that stuff off at your two intermediate sections. This will ensure that as you lose Sino pilots, because that's going to happen, people do gank Sino ships, you always have a stack of ventures and a stack of fuel to get to light Sinos and re-supply uh, your Sino alts. And, it'll, and the 50,000 jump freighter fuel will always make sure that if you ever make a mistake for some reason, you didn't calculate your fuel right, uh, you brought the wrong fuel, you always have a stash of 50,000 fuel at each jump point to refuel your jump freighter if you're ever in a bind or in trouble if you made a mistake. Uh, that also goes into the uh, next point about jump freighters. Jump freighters are in intense uh, forms of transportation in need because they require some resources. And one of those, in my opinion, is at least two Sino alts. Because as you get your skills up, you're going to start trying to limit your jumps down to two intermediate jumps, right? So you're going to need to train a, a Sino alt, two of them preferably, who have Sino Field 4 and can fly a venture. The Sino Field 4 is required because um, that level of training allows you to fit enough fuel into a venture to actually light a Sino. If you have Sino, Sinosaur Field 3, even if you put the expanded cargo rig on the venture and load it up with fuel, you still can't make the make the Sino because the fuel consumption will be too high. So you have to train the Sino field four on your alts. And I suggest at least two Sino alts. And like I said, when you stash your goods in your intermediate systems, you also stash jump clones on your Sino alts for each one. So then anytime you want to make a run, you just log on your Sino alts, jump clone to the, your systems, load up in your Sino ships, and you're good to go to start making your run. Does everyone understand that? Cool, cool. Makes sense. Cool, cool, cool. Murder, right, do, you, uh, do you gate your jump freighter in high sec into, from the last low sec jump? Hold on, let me, let me make sure your spy is not logged on real quick. Uh, no, nah, let me think. Uh, yeah, so I do, I personally gate my jump freighter. This catches a lot of people out, but I, I've, I've been gating my uh, jump freighter for a long time. Um, and I, it saves so much time because the only other option is to slow boat goods down from Jita in like a freighter, maybe, if you want to spend that money and risk that much money, or like blockade runners or DSTs. And the only way to do it any faster, if you don't use a jump freighter, is with a freighter, which already costs a couple billion. A lot of people who do it also pre-scout and web their own jump freighter and such, or use public contracts. Yes, this is true. Now, so what I do, and I'm glad you asked that question because it reminded me some more things to tell y'all. But uh, so when I'm on my last jump, I pull it up. So say I'm right here on my last jump. Next thing is Jeter, right? Well, you can't jump in the high sec. You're not, you're not, you can't jump in the high sec. You can jump out of high sec, but you can't jump in high sec. So on this last jump, um, I dock up and I wait for my Sino to finish burning. I dock up my Sino wall and I send my Sino wall out to scout in the shuttle. He checks, he checks the system. He descans all over the place. He goes to the gate, checks the gate, makes sure nothing freaky is going on over there. And, uh, and then he, he might even jump into the next side and just check that real quick and then come back. Um, on top of that, uh, one of the things you always do on each jump is, like, say I jump from Villa to Ananen. By the time I jump into Ananen, I dock up, I prep Villa's Sino alt. Either I leave them burning or I dock them up, refuel them, and bring them back out and burn them again. This is called an emergency Sino. So once I jump into Ananen, say I jump into Ananen and there's three redeemers and some uh, fast tackle. And for some reason, my jump's a little wonky, and they're burning in on me trying to bump. And for some reason, I'm not able to insta dock. I don't care what's going on. I immediately jump back to uh, my Sinawal and Villa and dock up. 
anytime uh, you jump somewhere, you should have emergency, emergency signals ready to jump back to. Same thing when you start gating the cheetah. You get three or four jumps uh, closer to cheetah, and for some reason there's 150 catalysts who don't care at all and try to gank you. The first, you don't try to survive. You don't try to warp. You don't try to do nothing. If it looks sketchy, you jump back to NNN, you dock up, and you, and you try another day or you try in two hours. That's how you protect your investment. So your Ananen uh, alt is your scout. So do you bring the Villasen one up to Ananen as the e-sino? No, no, no. You don't scout the you don't scout the jumps out, and I'm gonna teach you why. Like I have my own system. You know, you only scout the first uh, warp. Your goal for a Jita run. This is different from other runs. This is not an all sec run. This is a Jita run. Your goal for a Jita run is for your last jump to be one gate jump into high sec. So if gotcha. Onan, if Onanin is one gate jump into high sec, like 0.5 and above, we're good because that means no bubbles. That means concord responses. That means a different mentality of the players that are up there, right? Um, with the bookmark method, I'm about to teach you, you don't really have to uh, scout the route. It's not important. And with the emergency sino method of leaving on and in burning or ready to burn, you always have a quick out where you can instantly jump to your alt. Make sense? Yep. Okay, cool, cool. All right, now, I'm about to teach you how to be safe. The, the groundwork you need to lay down to be safe. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, you say you jump, and then you see something sketchy, you jump to the emergency sign up. Yep. My question is on the timers. So, the orange timer is not the one, uh, you don't have, you can jump right away again, right? It, the orange timer doesn't prevent you the, from the orange, The orange timer prevents you from jumping, but whenever you make a jump in a jump freighter, right? This is golden rule of jump freighter. Whenever you make a jump in a jump freighter, the first thing you do is dock, and then you wait for your blue timer to go down under 10 minutes. By that time, your red timer will already be gone. If you ensure that every time you jump, your, your blue timer goes under 10 minutes, uh, you will never increase the orange timer past two minutes or whatever the starting bracket is. If you jump before the jump freighter, the blue timer goes down under 10 minutes, you will gradually and continually increase the red timer's amount for each jump. And you'll find yourself in a position to where your red timer is 10 minutes long and your blue timer is five hours. And you don't want to do that. So each jump, you just dock up, take a break. Mexican, go grab the coffee that you love, come back. It's under 10 minutes. You make your next jump. Does that make sense? Uh, I got all mixed up. So okay. uh, if you have the both timers, you cannot jump again until one of the timers goes off, right? The, the orange timer, the jump reactivation timer, which is orange, stops you from jumping. Okay, got it. That's the blue, all. Thanks. The, and I'll, I'll elaborate some more. The blue timer is your jump fatigue timer. A percentage of your jump fatigue timer turns into your reactivation timer. So the, based off that percentage, that math, the higher your fatigue timer, the higher your orange reactivation timer is thus never jump until your blue timer is less than 10 minutes this will ensure that your red timer never gets high and you can make jumps quickly does that you make does that make sense mexican yes thank you cool 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 and that's important i'm glad you said something about that first class guy so if i'm missing stuff i'm sorry and i appreciate your questions now you, you got your sign all in position and you're ready to start building your infrastructure for your jumps, right? The first thing you do is undock in the shuttle. Once you undock, spam control space. Spam control space. Zoom out. Make sure that your TAC map is up. Hold down the approach key for you is probably Q. And double click just before 10 kilometers. Now, as your ship is moving, this is for stations. As your ship is moving, you're looking at the back of this ring and you want it to just not touch the station model. See, that's pretty good. Now, 
control B and you write uh, something like jump point. I like to do attention because it grabs my attention. So I'll show you. Now I got a point in space, tension jump point. It is not touching the station and it is close. If I click the station, it still reads zero meters. And if I right click dock, I dock instantly and my velocity does not change. That means you got a good jump point. The reason why you do this is because anytime you jump to a station in a freighter, you want your freighter to jump to dock up instantly without having to move at all. It's called an insta dock. If you don't do this, you risk getting yourself killed because as you approach, if enemies get on grid, all they gotta do is bump you off. If you're, if you're inside the tether range and inside the dock caller range, they can't bump you out of that and you're already docking while they're trying to bump you. So you're just gonna dock anyway. Does that make sense? You will do this at every single station that you plan to jump to in a jump freighter. So, so you'll send those um, sino alts out first in a venture, if you, in, a, in a you know fitted and stocked up venture, if you can, if you think you'll survive. And you'll go out here and you make all these points. It can be ten meters. It doesn't have to be right in front of the um, station. It can be above the station. It can be below the station. But the meters need to read zero. And the 10K mark needs to not touch the station. The, the reason why you do this is because if you get too close, your jump freighter will jump inside the station model and the game will shoot your jump freighter out far into space at a very fast rate of speed. And you'll be out there in a bad situation, praying to God that you align fast enough before the enemies land on your freighter. Does that make sense? All right, now the next thing you do, if you're doing a Jita run, to set your uh, bookmarks across the gates. You'll warp to a, a, gate, a stargate at zero. And you're gonna make a bookmark on a stargate. You'll do this on every single uh, stargate from your last jump point up into Jita. I'll show you right now. This, this, what I'm showing you now, is the trick method that veteran, that older jump freighter pilots use to, nothing in EVE is foolproof, but to make it extremely hard for anyone to really get after you in a jump freighter. All right, so I've landed on the gate, warped at zero. But for what we're doing, that's not good enough. I double click towards the uh, Stargate. Look at the side. That was kind of okay. I'm going to move back a little bit. Stop it. All right. Your goal is to get as close to the Stargate as you can without bumping the Stargate with your shuttle. That's the goal. And once you do this, you might want to, yeah, that's perfect. See how you bumped? You make a bookmark. Now you got a gate warp bookmark. It's closer than warping to zero, right? Warping to zero was way back here. This bookmark is right next to the actual model that you can't see, but the actual end of the model for the actual game design. What this does is when you warp to this point in um, a jump freighter to a gate, and I've done this, I I've done it where there's 15 guys on grid, get camp in the gate, right? I don't leave warp. I'll be in warp at 20 kilometers. I'll even be still in warp right here at 10 kilometers. Guess what happens when you're in warp, guys? No one can lock you up. So you'll click the gate and you'll spam the jump button as you're coming out, coming into warp, and you'll be warp at 50 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 10 kilometers, and you won't come out of the, out of warp till you're almost bumping the station. And then you'll instantly jump the gate. And by that time, no one has had the chance to lock you, approach you, or do anything because they can't even give commands because you're not out of warp yet. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Got a question, though. Go ahead. The gate does not have the same mechanic. Like, uh, if you uh, come out of warp too close to it, it won't, like, bounce you off, would it? Yeah, it'll bump you. 
but it's not like it's not like the station. The station, the station bump is terrible because you land inside the actual model, so it's like an actual game glitch. This will give you a bump, but even if you bump the stargate, you just spam jump, you'll still jump the gate. You won't shoot off in the space. You'll just bump. Yeah, off that the was station. Like, so it won't shoot off. Okay, that, that's yep. my question. Yep. Thanks. Um, Have you had just, people uh, sign on to you as you warp to a gate to try to bump you off it? Absolutely. In fact, uh, two weeks ago, I had two redeemers drop on me and go for the bump. But with this bookmark uh, scenario, even if they're coming at me, I'm in warp. Um, so they tried their best, but it didn't matter because I was never out of warp. The whole time they were trying to do what they're doing, I was in warp constantly all the way up to the last second next to the gate. Spam jump, gone. Into high sec. You know, and once you get in high sec, they don't chase. And if they do jump the gate and, and mess with you, you inst if you see any yellow box or anything like that, or if you feel funny, you just jump back to your emergency sign on. Make sense? Yeah. I don't know if you ever heard about this, but that's that these, this bookmark system, that's the true method. That's what really keeps you safe. The, like this, what I'm teaching you now is the critical part. Because of the game mechanics, it denies the enemy. Uh, it, it gives them like a 0.01% chance instead of a 10% chance or a 15% chance. You know what I mean? Hey, uh, I got a question on, on the emergency sign. -off. I still don't understand that. Okay. Uh, I'm, assu I'm assuming, okay, uh, you are going to jump from high sec. Uh, you are coming out of a station, right? Yep. Okay. So if you're coming out of the station, and you're hoping to make it, but you see something sketchy. Uh, I don't understand why, instead of docking on the station, why you need to make an uh, emergency sign -off. So the, the emergency sign would be, okay, you undock. You undock from that station. You warp to the gate. You land on grid. Something goes wrong. Anything goes wrong. Something's wrong, right? Uh, uh, maybe you maybe for some maybe you fuck maybe you messed up and, and right click warp at zero instead of warp warping to your bookmark right like, let's use that scenario you, you got you undock station you weren't paying attention you right click warped at zero to the stargate right for some reason that stargate mo model is a little bit uh different than the other stargate models and now your um your uh jump freighter is gaining velocity and um, pr approaching the stargate physically approaching it with the velocity right redeemers drop boom boom they're going for the bump. Uh, yellow box starts before before they even should have yellow got the chance to yellow box when they when they first dropped. You should have been right clicking your capacitor. I mean your your player who you scroll down to and are sitting on, and jump to that uh, player, the one uh, your last jump whose sign is still burning. Does that make sense? Okay, got it. Yeah, I, I just couldn't see in which situation, but okay, in that situation. Can I, I can I add that. a little one thing to that? Go ahead, go ahead. Um, normally, you have two situations where you'd use the emergency sino, and those are two different sinos because you can't jump to the same system. The sign, yep. the e sino on the way to the gate is like normally in null sec, but if you get ganked in high sec, you jump to your low sec. Yeah. If you're on your way to Jira. Yes. So in this scenario, and I'll show you here. To be clear, so in this scenario, if something goes wrong in Onanen on my way to the first high sec gate to go to Jita, right? I will jump to Villa Villesen, right? Once I make it through the first high sec gate, I can dock up the Villesen alt. He's no longer needed. He's no longer an Isino. For the entire time I'm in high sec, I'll be relying on my Ananen alt to be my emergency Sino, so that if anything crazy happens in high sec. I can jump back to on and in to my alt there and dock up. Does that make sense? So as you travel, okay. your e signos change depending on what region and what part of the uh, process you're in. But remember, you can never jump to a sino that's in the same system with you. So your e sino is always whatever is not in your actual system that you're in. Got it. Can I ask an uh, unrelated question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, my understanding was that it's not a good idea to uh, get your jump freighter gate to gate in high sec. Is that true or not? That's that's opinionated. That's that is, maybe it's true. Maybe it's somebody's opinion. It's not mine though. Um, 
Okay. So the, normally, normally what freighters, jump freighters tell you, pilots tell you when you first learn, if you get up under one of them's wings, uh, they will tell you to, it's your choice. Some will say that they don't do it, and some will say that they always do it. And at the end of the day, it's your choice to do it or not. I do it because it saves me an immense amount of time. I get my freighter up to uh, Cheetah. I load the whole thing up. And, and from Cheetah, I jump straight to uh, my low sec sino, uh, sino, and I start, my, start moving again. The only other option, again, is to slow boat material from Cheetah to um, your low sec jump point. And again, unless you're using a multi-billion dollar freighter, is loaded with maybe a couple billion more worth of material, and then jumping that through six, seven, eight, nine gates, uh, it's going to take an, an extreme amount of time if you're using anything smaller than a freighter. So ideally, you want your high sec entry system to have like the highest security status possible, right? Like your bridge between low sec and high sec. I mean, that'd be great. I mean, that's ideal, but uh, you can't always have it like that. I, I don't tend to pay too much attention to that because listen. You follow everything to the T, and you get out when you're in trouble. If if you're tackled down, if anything goes wrong, um, and Dujek, you can you can put your input on this. This this is how I teach. I'm I don't come try to be a know it all, right? But uh, you've already you're already screwed over. The whole point is to be so fast and so quick and so on the money that no one ever had the chance to even lock you up. That's the point. I, I I think people who don't get in high sec are wasting their time. And also, yeah. you're almost... It's very rare that people put big contracts going from FTEC N to JITA. So you get to refit your freighter to be faster aligning or heavily tanked when you're going back. Yep. Like, previously, it was dangerous to even go into JITA, and the goons would gank, like, quite often. But now... Very rare. People have to hate you to want to gank you in yep. high sec all the time. Yeah, the game has changed, and you keep your ear to the game to know when it changes again. Um, but just guys, don't forget those those two uh, bookmark things. They're, they're so important. Remember, ten your ten kilometer ring needs to be just touching the station, just not touching the station. That's your station jump point. It gives you insta dock. It gives you safety. It gives you zero velocity when trying to dock. And remember, you warp to zero at the gate. You warp to zero at the gate. You approach the gate and get as close as you can without bumping. And you drop another bookmark, and that's your secure, safe warp two point for your freighter to take a gate. And that yeah. 10 kilometer one, that's where you light the sino? That's where you light the sino. And if you, and that's critical, like anyone who doesn't know how to do sinos do, should not be lighting sinos for capital ships or freighters in our alliance. Make sure you know how to do it because the last thing you ever want to do is cost a friend or, or a court mate their capital ship because you didn't know how to properly uh, light a station sign up. That, that trick I just explained also protects carriers, uh, super, super um, capitals, and dreadnoughts as well. There are basically, if you go online, you can find a guide for any given station and they will have yes. like good picture suggestions of where to light it with and, annotated ranges. And that leads into the next point, guys. Test your bookmarks. Once you're done making them, go back with a, a diff, maybe with your shuttle or maybe a bigger ship if you have one on hand and test your bookmarks. Make sure those ships are docking up because every some of these station, station models have variants. So a, a perfect 10K bookmark will work a thousand times on, on 10 different stations and then it'll be that one station that you have to move that book bookmark in a little bit for it to be a true insta doc. So you always just test out your bookmarks, and whenever you notice a problem, you fix them. Make sense? All right. So um, another thing about all of this is opsec on comms. Right? Try not to talk about your jump free on comms, and we all slip up. You've heard us. We slip up. But don't share your um, routes. Don't talk on uh, comms about your freighter. They're juicy targets. I'm talking about 15 billion isk. You know, the haul alone might cost you anywhere from nine to 11 and a half billion. And then you need to get implants and things like that. Total uh, cost investment, not even counting fuel, can be upwards of 15 billion. So you just don't even talk about it. Don't share about it. Don't joke about it. Keep it to yourself and stay safe, right? 
Uh, another thing about besides OPSEC and not sharing your routes is don't work between structures, man. I would rather lose a three billion freighter than a fifteen billion jump freighter. So don't be lazy. Don't warp your um your jump freighter between stations and NOSEC. Just pop just front the cash for a freighter or use use a, um a blockade runner or something small. Take your time, get your stuff to where it needs to be to your jump freighter, and then only navigate with your jump th freighter via jump drive only. If you don't do that, I guarantee you, you're going to get ganked. And if you're not in my court and I see you doing it, you already know I'm going to be on it trying to kill you. And everyone else Neve is going to try to get you too. You know what I mean? So just only navigate with your jump drive when using your jump freighter. Uh, there's something else that's very important that I wanted to tell you. Okay, the uh, implants and the fittings. Let me show you guys about that. All right, so there's three types of fittings for your jump freighter. None of it has to do with tank. I don't care what nobody tells you. This is my opinion, and you're learning from me, so you're going to get my, my side of the story. Don't fit for tank. That doesn't even make sense. If you've if you got to tank something, you've already messed up. You're already dead. The key to fitting your jump freighter is a line time, fuel conservation, and cargo space. All right. So, when you are piloting your jump freighter, since I have it fitted, I'll start with this. When you're, say, going to JITA, when you're traveling empty, no cargo, and you're on your way to JITA, right? You're going to use three inertial stabs in the bottom slots. One, two, three. If your freighter happens to have more, which I don't think they do, you just max it out with inertial stabs. The goal is to get a, an align time of less than 17 seconds, less than 15 seconds, right? The first part of that is the inertial stabs. The second part is the pl implants. These are your implants. I got mid grades because I don't got Cybernetics 5, right? And also didn't want to spend the money. You're going to use the Nomad line of implants, mid or high grade. Notice that it says 1% bonus to agility. Again, 2%, 3%, 3%, 4%, 5 and then side effect, 10% bonus to the strength of all Nomad implant, implant secondary effects if you have the whole set. So you buy the whole set, you get all the bonuses plus a bonus for having the set. And these are the Nomad line of um, implants, Alpha through Epsilon. Then you get yourself the Rogue Evasion man Evasive Maneuvering Implant, EM705. This gives you a 5% bonus to agility. Then you get the Inherent Implants Noble Mechanic MC803. That gives you a little bit of hull, and that gives you a little bit of armor. And this will be your implant set right here. Remember, mid-grade nomads, your rogue evasive, and your two nobles. I'll jump into it to show you the difference. So remember, we're at 17 seconds. Did I jump into my thing? Nope. Oh, what happened? Sorry, the game's the game's been acting up for me today. You need to wait for more than two session timers if you're getting out of a ship and then getting into implants. Yeah, yeah. I'm in All right, so I got my implants in. Line time is now 12 and a half seconds. That's massive. Might not sound like a lot, but it's massive. This stuff like this keeps you alive. This keeps you off the gate grid uh, as best as possible. Um, so the inertia stabs with the implants gets you down your line time. Your goal is sub 15 seconds, and we are at 12 and a half seconds. That's the, uh, that's the travel mode, right? Now say we are hauling.
All right, for hauling, we're going to get three cargo expanded twos. This will double your cargo space. You'll go from 160,000 to like 340,000, depending on skills. You'll use these only when you're carrying a load, right? So these will stay inside your jump freighter's inventory until you're, you're, you're at the point where you're picking up a load. Once you pick the load, once you're going to pick the load up, you put the inertias back into the jump freighter and you take out the cargo expanded uh, cargo holes, excuse me, and you put them on the freighter and you've doubled your uh, carrying space. The final fitting is this. See if I can find it. There it is. Prototype jump drive economizer. Three of those. This is if you are transporting your jump freighter empty. You're moving it from place to place. You're getting it in position. You're not, you're not doing any gate jumps. So like you're, you jump out from, J, uh, from F tech in to get in position to go up to G to purchase and, and uh, procure material to bring back down. You'd have this loaded because you're not planning on any gate jumps and you're not, uh, you're not doing anything with jumping. You don't have any cargo. This will drastically cut down on your fuel consumption, saving you tens of millions of ISK or more. So remember, the inertia stabs for the gate jumps into JITA, the cargo expanded holes for when you're carrying a load, and the prototype jump drive economizer when you're not carrying a load and jumping up to get in position to go get your load. Uh, at this point, I want to open um, the class up for any more questions. I gave you all a ton of information. It's my first class. Uh, thank you for bearing with me and, and following along. And I hope you learned something. Uh, please feel free to ask questions now. Don't be shy. Come on. Somebody ask something. Does that where trick the work come where? from? Say it again. Udolf, go. Uh, does that trick work where, you know, you turn autopilot on when you have a destination? And if you land within the docking radius, you dock automatically? Does that work with jump freighters? I don't know, but I don't touch autopilot at all. And... Uh, I don't know about that. I can't answer that. No, I, I personally would not try that. It it does, but you're never not paying 100% attention and spamming jump and dock when you can. Yep. Yeah, to me, that sounds like a, a just a recipe for a big mistake. Uh, it's better to just always be present, always be non-AFK, always be uh, taking care of your jump freighter. Use the bookmarks, spam the, spam the docks and jumps, keep your freighter alive. Um, somebody else had a question? Go ahead. Is there a reason why you consider 15 seconds a line uh, breakpoint? Uh, it's my personal, it's my personal uh, point, and it's what uh, I was taught. Um, and you can't get too much better than that anyway. I mean, I, got, I could go high grade maybe and uh, upgrade my cybernetic skill and get one more implant, which is in my, I think I actually have it. Uh, don't, one more implant, I might be able to get it down to 11, but uh, I feel like uh, 15 seconds to me is just fast enough before I start feeling like, man, this is slow. Uh, why, do you have an opinion on that? No, I, I just, it, like if 15 seconds was the break point, I, I like, Personally, I use uh, warp speed implants. It does, goes for more or less the same. You get to the gate fast. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather, I, I focus on aligning fast to get off the grid quick. But uh, uh, you could try warp speed, but my method is uh, all about align time. Getting off, my whole method is about staying invulnerable. So that means fast aligns, Staying in warp to the last second at the uh, gate and being able to instant dock wherever I jump. It's all about, and for me, invulnerability is my tank. 
Uh, anyone else got any questions? Was, those are good questions. Feel free to ask. It means you, it means you learned something if you're asking questions. Yeah, I got one for you. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> so you were talking about the fittings with respect to, you know, what you're doing, the situation yes. dependence. So say that you are exporting material from NullSec to Jita. How would you approach that? Would you, you know, say you've got 360,000 cubic meters that you want to move from FTAC into Jita. Would you take two full trips or would you? No, 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 no. You would load the, um, you would load the, what you call it, the expanded cargo holds and take it in one load for two reasons. First of all, two trips is twice the amount of danger. Second point, two trips is twice the amount of fuel cost. You won't save enough on fuel uh, loading the uh, economizers uh, to cover having to make two trips. So you might as well load the uh, expanded cargo um, mods and take it all in one trip. Safer and it costs less. I guess I'm mostly focused on the last portion where you're going to have to gate. So where you would normally take the expanded cargo holds off for in favor of the inertial steps. Oh, at that, at that point, if you're, you're gating without the inertials, unless you want to, uh, that's a personal call. Um, the smartest thing to do would be would be the inertias and to two low two uh, trips. Okay. That's... But again, again, you got to think about it. Now you're making two gate trips. So right. if you want to be a little bit slower and make one and, 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 and try to shoot for the second one, hopefully it's just as safe. Or do you want to go ahead and shoot and just make one trip? You know, that's personal preference. Personally, I, I do one trip. Everything I do is one trip. I don't try to uh, turn things into two trips because I feel like all I'm doing is doubling the danger. Okay. You know, they might they might have noticed you on the first trip, uh, and finally got all their stuff together to where when you go for the second, now they now they got it down pat. You know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. I was just curious. Whereas if you just go ahead and take off on the first one. Now they're scrambling to try to, it's like how uh, standing is, like scrambling to try to get it together. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, anything else? Uh, just a general question. So I've been trying to do like my first Jira run. Yeah. Is that something I need to talk to somebody in private, like as to more uh, like systems and so on and so forth? So, so I'll, always in private always in private for sure never on standing of course and i know you know that um and i actually just helped a court member do his first run and set up his infrastructure and it's something i could help you with too um uh jump freighter pilots got to stick together we're like we're like long haul truckers you know what i mean uh right. kicking the bobo on the radio making sure we're all safe uh so um one of the best ways to do that is for someone who has an established route if they're willing to help you get your feet in the door, help you get set up because now you can jump straight to their silos with full, with a full load of uh, ventures, fuel and everything, and go ahead and set your infrastructure up in one walk. And then all you got to do is worry about burning your um, sign walls over to the systems to drop the jump clones in. Ah, uh, okay. See what yeah, I'm saying? Okay. That then. And, and, and setting your routes up can be tricky, man. Like I've lost, it, it can be frustrating because uh, if you don't have help, you are trying to burn a venture through like low sec and null sec uh, or, or burning your alt up there and then trying to find everything you need off of the market, the regional market within like 10 jumps and then scrounge it all together, fit it, and then get it back to your spot. And this can be frustrating and, and dangerous. Um, honestly, the best thing to do is to go from your staging because everything will be there and just try to, uh, try to run the gauntlet and get that venture up, that first venture up and get that jump clone in. Um, and that's why it's critical, man, it's so critical on your first run. Do not forget to buy the, the stack of five ventures and all the stuff you need for each jump point first and get it in your, your freighter so that that stuff is finally there and you don't have to think about it again. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I went, uh, I just got my jump freighter from Catch over here. It was like four jumps and yeah, I ran into that, like getting the uh, supplies and the ships ready for the next jump and all that. Uh, yeah, it is yeah. frustrating. So the infrastructure, hey, definitely. Hey, and on that, on that tip right there, so this is what I do and everyone's, is, everyone's wallet's different, everyone's opinion is different. But when I set a route out, 
set a route up, I don't close it. I don't, I don't take, I don't remove the infrastructure and use it somewhere else. Whenever I set up a route, those, those, I don't care if it costs me a hundred million isk. I don't care. Those 15, 20 ventures fits all the fuel stay there. Cause you never know one day I might move to catch one day. I might move back to syndicate. Oh, well, guess what? I got a route already set up. When I moved um, to pure blind, I, I stepped an entire route from where I lived to pure blind. And all that infrastructure is still there. So if I ever want to go back to where I came from, I log on, everything's there. Uh, it's, it's set. If I want to go th to this other place I used to live, it's all there, set up. So personally, me as a jump freighter pilot, whenever I set up a route, all that infrastructure stays. And if I want a new, a new route, I buy new infrastructure for that route. And you end up having, you end up having this uh, spider network of routes all over New Eden that you've already set up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Quest another question. Uh, when you are undocking in a firm station in NOSEC, some yep. of the uh, stations, they kick you out immediately. That means that you are uh, being tar you can be targeted right away. Uh, how do you deal with that? You, you can't be targeted right away. You can't, yeah. You, every, every, the, the ships have vulnerability timers. Even the, um, so when the jump freighter, and correct me, Dujak, if I'm wrong, but when the jump freighter makes its jump, there's an invulnerability timer on the jump freighter after the sino jump. Yeah. I mean, like, this is what goes back to what Mike said earlier. Like, you should never be undocked if you have yellow timer, because the way that they will kill you in any situation is by bumping you. So, yeah, like, they bump one you. of the things that you'll see on, like, even stations that aren't kick out, if you undock and you spend, like, too much time thinking about stuff or aligning, they'll undock, say, a carrier right behind you bump, and bump. start pushing you out. Yep. And then you just have to dock up and wait. Like, yes. there's a certain amount of patience in, like, you might be in a situation where it's just not safe to be undocked and you just have to wait for the next day. Yes. Patience is your, patience is your friend with, as a jump freighter pilot. There's been plenty of days where I, oh man, was, I mean, I'm going to get Mexican this and do Jack wanted that. And I got these nice little shiny things I've been one. Ooh, I'm excited. I can't wait to get off work and get it. You know, you log on and today's just not the day. It's too dangerous. And you say, forget it. I'll do it tomorrow. Um, the second thing is the, another thing that I didn't say outright is the last thing you do is undock the freighter. The freighter does not undock until the Sino is undocked and on his uh, bookmark uh, he's, that you verify that he's fueled up, that he's in fleet because he's got to be in fleet and that everything's ready. After everything is verified ready, then the jump freighter jumps. And that even means, say my, um, say my alts, Mex, Mex, Mia X right here in the uh, local chat, a uh, corp chat. All right. So before I undock, I scroll down. To me x and, I, and i'm there i can right click immediately and jump everything's got to be ready uh before you undock that freighter and everything you should be doing is spamming and getting your stuff done and docking up it's like total okay focus. so my the question i i i didn't phrase it right so uh, my question was in reference like okay the station is camped and people are waiting outside to get you so you don't undock in that situation, right? Yeah, yeah, you don't. No, heck no. Oh, okay. That was my question. Okay. I thought you'd like, uh, when you said you had a invulnerability timer uh, that you could align and then warp off during those seconds. But once you move your ship or align, uh, uh, they can't target you, right? Yeah, you can't align. But you could, if you were in low sec, technically undock and jump and they would have no way of stopping it yes uh, but in null sec they can stop that too in yes. which case as soon as you have done that you'll be insta scrounged by a hick you can't dock back up and you die and that's that's a little bit outside the scope of the class because uh so this is about a null sex life um and we'll probably i may do a null sec uh focused like straight null jump freightering but this is more for like supplying yourself, which is mainly going to be from Jita. Now we're blessed. I don't know what, I don't know how many of you guys have been in different groups. We're blessed by the industry uh, in Brave. Seriously. I've been in plenty of, plenty of groups where everything I got was from Jita because there was nothing else to get. Like you had to go up to Jita to get it. 
you know. Um, so and remember now, in low sec and all that, there is no tether. There's none of that. Everything relies on the invulnerability timers and the instadoc and, and your personal safety and scouting and decision making about, okay, is this the time or not? Low sec, oh. sec is a little bit of a different story, but it's all, honestly, it's just as safe as long as you're not playing around. You got your bookmarks set and you're on the money, focused, doing what you're supposed to do. Go ahead. Uh, one last thing. Uh, never, ever, 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 even if they hold your family at gunpoint, sign on to any Citadel that isn't owned by Brave. Yes. Yes. Only blue. Only thing you're jumping to is blue structures and uh, NPC stations. That's it. If you sign on to a uh, neutral station that you have docking access to. They can deny your access. They can deny the access mid jump. Yep. And so you'll think you have access to complete your jump. You're sitting on that um, structure and you right click dock and it'll deny you because they ganked. They just ganked you. And now and you're sitting there with an orange timer. So you can't emergency sign them out. You're stuck. And there is one of those stations in every single low sec border system near where we could exit to get into Jito. Yep. So you just use this, use the um, NPC stations and you'll be safe. All right. If there's, is there any more questions? Yeah, I got two. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you were talking about the undocking the freighter is the last thing you would do. Would you, since an industrial sign lasts for 10 minutes, would you? Yep like that and then undock absolutely okay i didn't hear that on your checklist so i just want to make sure and um yep the other one is just i'm just curious what the actual tackling mechanics are in relation to jump freighter i know you want to prevent being tackled at all costs but is it just one single point to no, disable no, your jump drive or no uh, i'm a little i'm a little yeah I'm a little... that's fine one is enough yeah yep yeah. um the basic basically don't get tackled the, the most common way, uh, the people who killed the most jump freighters, the way that they primarily kill them, if you do all the things you're supposed to, is you're warping to the gate, you haven't listened to this guide and set up a gate bookmark, you land close to the gate, and they sino in blops battleships underneath you, and bump you scram off. you with the... Arazu that got them in. Yep. Scram you, web you. You'll never reach the gate. That's why the bookmark is critical. Remember, guys, if you got the bookmark right, they can't even lock you because, like, and, and I, I'm, I'm excited for you guys to experience that. Let me know. You Just if you ever do this, look at your velocity under your capacitor. You will be at 50 kilometers at that gate and you'll still be in warp. You'll go to 20 kilometers and you'll still be in warp. You will come out of warp at zero kilometers, insta jump, and they'll never be able to lock you. You'll never be actually gaining, you'll never be traveling through space with your thrusters. You'll be traveling the entire time in warp. And that's the key to your safety. Um, if there's, again, if there's nothing, and there's no rush, I'm, I'm having fun, and I'm looking forward to you guys supplying yourself, making some money, some iskies, as Mexican calls it on the market. Uh, so if there's any questions, we're good. And if not, we'll end the class. Yeah, I'm just wondering how much more often do you get attacked than a jump freighter versus a normal freighter? Like, because it's obviously First, a more exciting target, but. Personally, um, in my flying, oh, I never really. Um, like the two weeks ago, the Redeemer thing I was talking about, was it, that was like the only time anyone's actually seemed to have made a move. And I actually saw it coming a mile away. Because I sent my, there was a blue in system, so I comboed him and asked him, hey, what's up with these newts? Because they, they were looking funny, acting funny. Sent my shuttle through, and I saw this MOA. This MOA was on the gate acting funny, like checking my shuttle out. I jumped through, he jumped through, and I jumped back, and I, and I had that intuition. And, and then when I, when I made the warp, uh, there was the uh, Sino ship and the drop. Um, so you'll know. You'll have that intuition, follow your intuition. And use your scout on that last uh, on that when you start to do the gate jumps. Use that scout, check it out, feel it out. You'll know, and you'll become intimately knowledgeable of your systems you use because of how much you use them. And you'll know the faces, you'll know the names and what they do in system and stuff like that. 
Can I add something here? Um, oh, okay. well, hold on. Let me finish answering. Let me finish one thing. So to actually answer your question, I would say, and I could be wrong, that freighters get killed much more often than jump freighters because of because of the way in which freighters work is inherently less safe and more vulnerable than the way jump freighters work. Because you don't have an e sino. Basically, you don't have you don't have a jump drive. You don't have sinos in the game. The, like with this mechanism, I'm teaching you the method, and I'm teaching you. It's it's like I said. There's very small. There's very few holes in this method. So it's basically you have to fuck it up to to become truly vulnerable. Like Dujack was just saying, like you warped to the gate and you didn't use the bookmarks, and now you have some velocity to, to get to the gate. Like you just fucked up, and and you put yourself in position to get a bump. You know what I mean? Like that's how you get killed in a, a jump freighter. Yeah, that's when I've been attacking yeah. my normal freighter, and somehow I've survived. But yeah, not using the bookmark is a bad idea. It's critical. Yeah, but you know, when you're using a normal freighter, you're pretty much using that only in high sec. Because if you're going in to anything else, you should be in a jump freighter. Because when you're in high sec and you've got a freighter, its effective hit points are so ridiculously high. The the, the, the you, tank you becomes need strong court. A, yeah, it, like you. You don't need to. You can literally autopilot in high sec in a regular freighter, because yeah. the fleet that would need to be assembled to take you down is immense. Um, but but uh, as you develop a null sec, you realize that actually people use freighters all the time in null sec. If you're an indie bro and you're building um you're building uh titans, super carriers, all kinds of stuff, and you got planets strung out you got depots in multiple systems right and you need to consolidate your assets into one place to do your construction you will often use a freighter that has you know a million cubic meters or whatever in it to get all the 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 minerals or the or the components or whatever you got going on to the different locations you need to do get them to to do what you're trying to do or you may do it just for your marketeering you may have large stockpiles in one place but the good market is somewhere else. So now your goal is to move all the stockpiles to the station your jump freighter is in because it's in the same system already um, and, and do it like that. Now, now that's debatable and it's outside the scope. Like you may want to jump out of the system with your jump freighter and jump back to the right station. You know, there's multiple variables in that, but there's plenty of reasons why people use freighters in null sec. Just look at Z Killboard. <laughs> I mean, Z Killboard isn't really good because those are the ones that died. So technically, they're just idiots. No, no, no. That, that's going to the point that there's plenty of no, there's plenty of null sec usage for freighters, and and they die, but they're being used in null sec. Go ahead, uh, Dujak. The the number of jump freighters that die every day and the number of ganked regular freighters in high sec is roughly the same. Yeah. But uh, like there are there are a couple of cartels that gank that gank anything that jumps in low sec, and they have like basically the entire map covered. If you see a bunch of like if you see a bunch of newts in the system you want to sign into before you jump into high sec, and you can't find them in any stations, that might be a good sign that they are actually cloaked up in Sino ships on gates waiting to try yes. to kill you. And with this method, it's going to be much harder for them. Yes. And that goes into like knowing your system. So uh, you'll notice that uh, at this time of the day, there's 25 newts in this system. And at this time of the day, there's three. All right, I'm going to do my jumps at this time of the day when there's only three newts ever. And you keep, you keep evaluating, you keep watching, you keep paying attention. And you decide that, you know what, this system's too dangerous. I'm changing my route, you know, or this time has become too dangerous. Or these guys have seen my face and, and seen my Sino too many times and have seen us together too many times. They know me now. So I'm going to change systems. You know, you stay, stay apprised of the situation and uh, stay on your toes. You know what I mean? Anyway, go, guys, this uh, class is, um, is going long, so we're going to wrap it up. The last thing I would like to do is uh, give the chance for feedback, like on me. You know, is there something I can prove? Was the material good? Did you feel like you learned anything?
Jump your freighter, well, bro. I got a <laughs> comment. Uh, if you finish explaining something and somebody and you told somebody to wait uh, to chip in, uh, please remember to ask him. Okay, now you can go ahead and chip in. Okay, thank you. I apologize. And did I do that to you? Yes, you did. I apologize, Mexican. Would you like to chip in now? Okay. No, I just wanted to say back in the conversation when you are on the last jump into high sec, and part of the uh, checklist should be okay. Let me check the kill records of these guys here, and if you see that they kill five jump raiders in the last week, uh, and then they don't wanna... have any kills ever, never. Uh, yeah, you develop like uh, uh, more than Mike was saying. You develop an instinct, so uh, you learn to do uh, learn the funky things that don't quite make sense. And then you you get a instinct for stuff. So uh, yeah, uh, check the guys in local if they have kills. You know you may want to choose another time to jump. Yeah, I guarantee you. If I'm in a system and I look up some dudes and they all got five jump raiders kills, I am not using that system anymore. <laughs> the the people who gank all those freighters, they don't kill them on the Sino characters. They will often have like completely clean kill boards. And they make new characters once they've killed enough to be suspicious. Yeah, true. Good point. Yeah. Thanks for but the chat. Yeah, no problem, man. Um, thanks for coming. I hope y'all learned something. Oh, thank you. It was an excellent class. Cool. Yeah, cool. for your first class, it was fantastic. Thank you. Awesome, man. All right, guys. Well, uh, go get some kills and iskies. All right. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks. Bye bye. All right, brothers. Thanks, Marta. Yep, no problem.